Somebody said, uh, you really need to take this up to Milwaukee, to the big energy fair up there. They said the people who promote hemp up there uh, are a little different looking than what you are. <laughs> I am Betty Obendor, and I'm curator for the Polo Historical Society. The reason this Northwest Territory even opened in the first place in 1825 was because of the lead mines in Galena. Then when the Illinois Central Railroad wanted to come through around 1854-55 along in there, Zenas Applington owned 160 acres in here, gave or sold the land to the Illinois Central Railroad, the railroad went through, and it was the beginning of Polo. Applington eventually became a senator and was a personal friend of Abraham Lincoln. When we set up this Schoolhouse Museum in 2001, we looked at things that we could put in it, what different displays. So we put in uh, the, the stagecoach, since it's on the Galena Trail, we put a little corner for the stagecoach display. Then we have a little corner over here for the 1832 Black Hawk War, because Lincoln crossed the schoolyard in 1832 as a 23-year-old military man. And then we have a corner with a hemp display. Hemp was a very old crop in the United States. In fact, it went back 150 years. Hemp itself just kind of phased out. By 1933, there was no market for it, and less than 50 tons of fiber were produced in the United States. Then when the war, World War II, came around, all right, now it was time when Java and the Philippines were taken over. It was time then to see where could we grow it in the United States. In 1942, patriotic farmers at the government's request planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp, an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. Polo was picked as the pilot program that Polo was selected throughout the United States to be the pilot program. And I just thought that was really neat. As for the United States Navy, every battleship requires 34,000 feet of rope and other craft accordingly. So here in the Boston Navy Yard, where cables for frigates were made long ago, crews are now working night and day making cordage for the fleet. Because it was a government program. They told it, I think, more as a patriotic duty because we didn't have any rope because the Japanese had overrun the Philippines and Java and part of Indonesia. I'm Larry Acker, and uh, my granddad, Luther, was the one who raised the, the hemp. And I remember him talking about it for quite a bit. And he did raise it in 43, and he was ready to go again in 44, but then they discontinued the program, and the Japanese got driven out of the Philippines. My granddad had about 25 acres of it, one of the larger growers in the county. It was like raising corn. You plant a little bit soon. The hemp was kind of resistant to a light frost, so they could go a little later if they had to, which was a kind of a production problem in a way in the fall because it wouldn't rot it quite as quick. And the thing about hemp is it didn't rot. Uh, it was pretty much mildew resistant, and uh, that's why these sh the ships were using it on their, their ropes for their mastheads and stuff. I knew some of the neighbors that grew it, including some of my own cousins and uncles, but a lot of it is mostly because of patriotic duty rather than 
something that was convenient because it was a new crop and nobody really knew anything about it. Thus, plans are afoot for a great expansion of the hemp industry as a part of the war program. This film is designed to tell farmers how to handle this ancient crop, now little known outside Kentucky and Wisconsin. This is hemp seed. Be careful how you use it. For to grow hemp legally, you must have a federal registration and tax stamp. This is provided for in your contract. Ask your AAA committee man or your county agent about it. I think 1943 and 4, there were meetings held at the high school as to um, advise us how to grow it. And uh, that stamp cost one dollar, but they never collected it. They were so eager for everyone to grow it. As I recall, they didn't charge us for the seed. The soil preparation had to be a, a good seed bed. You planted a, a drill. The seed was hardy because every bit of it come up, it seemed like. Very thick stand. You could hardly walk through it. And on good ground, it would grow to eight or 10 feet tall. Slender stalk, oh, as big as your little finger. And uh, this particular plant they had is, um, well, it's cannabis sativa, but it was, the thing was, it was not the variety that would cause you to get high on drugs because it didn't have any. Here's an ideal stand, the right height to be harvested easily, thick enough to grow slender stalks that are easy to cut and process. 